Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining in this morning. We are about to start our webinar, Video Surveillance with Artificial Intelligence, Metadata Recognition, and License Plate Recognition. So we're going to start the webinar in about two minutes. We just want to let you know that we're going to have a question panel uh, where you're going to be able to send all of your questions, comments. If you have a project coming up, please let us know through the question panel. This is on the right side of your screen. Please uh, identify where it is and we'll be using it throughout the webinar. So our engineer, Roberto Jauregui, he can answer all of your questions throughout the webinar. So, okay, let's just wait two more minutes for everyone to join in. And a quick reminder that this webinar will be recorded and sent to your email right after the webinar. As well, we have our EPCOM YouTube channel where you can check this webinar and all of the other recordings that we do on our daily basis. So please check uh, EPCOM USA on YouTube to review all of the recordings from our webinars. Okay, so if you can let us know, if you can hear us loud and clear uh, through the question panel that you have uh, on the GoToWebinar platform. It's on the right side of your screen. And if you can let us know from where are you viewing this webinar, from what state in the US, or if you're seeing it from another country, please let us know. Thank you, Mr. Kurt. All right. So we're just going to wait another minute and then we'll be ready. At the end of the webinar, we also will have a Q&A. So if you have a question about the products or the software that we're going to be reviewing through the webinar, please just let us know at the end of the webinar. Or if you want to send us a question, uh, we're going to be here uh, from Trinity. Mr. Court, thank you so much for joining in this morning. And yes, at the end of the webinar, we'll have a Q&A panel. And after the webinar, we're going to be sending the information from our engineering team. If you have a project coming up, please let us know. We have our engineering team ready to help you. And as well, we have stock on our Miami branch at San Antonio, as well as in El Paso, Texas. So if you need any of the products, just send us an email to your sales representative or join in directly with your username to appcom.net where you can purchase online directly. All right, so I think now will be 11.02 and it's a good time to start. So thank you everyone for joining in this morning to our e-series webinar, Media Surveillance with Artificial Intelligence, Metadata, Facial Recognition and License Plate Recognition, LPR. And for today's webinar, Roberto Jauregui, he will be our panelist. So Roberto, good morning. Good morning, Victor. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, like Victor said, my name is Roberto Jauregui. I'm a technician and engineer for the Miami branch of EPCOM. And I will be showing you guys today the new line of E-Series products with advanced AI, which are the metadata, the facial recognition, and the LPR, along with the fisheye and the PTZ cameras, and a new smart dual light supplement that we also have in store to show you guys today somewhere at the end of the presentation if you guys have any projects or any questions about anything after the webinar uh, you can contact me anytime my email is at the bottom of the page right here if you can see my cursor And without a doubt, let's start. So the first camera we're going to start with is the LPR camera. It is a four megapixel L uh, license plate recognition camera. It also comes with the basic advanced features. So motion detection, line crossing, region entrance and exiting and intrusion detection. But it also comes with advanced AI which is the LPR function of the camera. The general description of the LPR and how the LPR works, you can see the, the first image here. 
on the car, it's going to detect the plate. The second part is going to recognize the plate. It's going to capture it. And it's going to, this is the result it's going to give you on the user interface of the NVR. It will also capture it and save it into its own database because it can work standalone. It has an SD card of up to 256 gigabytes. So for the user interface, you can see right here, it's the date, 2020-0108, the time under it, and then right here, you will see the license plate itself. You can also see if you have put a name on it. So let's say you're adding the license plate itself and you put Office Boss or Jose or any type of name, you will also see that there. And you will also see whether it's on the allow list or the block list. So for the utility and applications of the LPR, there are a couple scenarios where you can use one. So for this camera, it has a speed of uh, a capture speed of up to zero to 70 kilom uh, kilometers per hour. What that means is you can use them in and on highways, you can use them on streets to capture plates, or you can just use them as a entrance to any to any gated communities. But you can um you can only use them for entrance and exiting. You don't want to use two LPRs for entrance and exiting. The reason for that is if you have, let's say here in the second image right here, the LPR recognizes the plate. Our plates are going to be on the back of the car uh, because we're in the United States. But just picture this post right here on the back. It's going to recognize the plate. It's going to open the barrier. If you have another camera in the front and the car passes, it's going to also recognize that plate for exiting and keep the barrier open. You don't want that because another car can be behind the car coming in. It may or may not have access and it can just go on through because the barrier is still open. So these are some of the applicable scenarios as I've, I was talking about earlier. We have the barrier control. The camera has two, well, three types. It has an audio, uh, an audio input and output. It has a relay, a dry contact for input output. And it has a Wigand output as well. So you can put any reader or, or a keypad. You can basically for double security. And here you can see in the first image, as I was talking, one for entering and one for exiting. So there's no confusion leaving the barrier open or anything. You can also use it for road surveillance. So like I said, the maximum uh, speed that it can capture is 70 kilometers per hour. You can use it for vehicle management. So in a parking lot, you can capture the vehicles and the license plates that are in that parking lot. And you can use it for investigation because the camera does work standalone. So, and you, and it also has a database that you can search each plate individually, or you can search it by car as well. These are the not applicable scenarios as I was talking about. You don't want to have an entrance and an exit. You don't want to share it. This is the connect scenario, the correct scenario that you want. You want to install it in one for entrance and one for exit. So these are some of the installation requirements. The plate percentage, the minimum plate percentage you want the plate at is at 6% and the maximum is 50%. So what this means is in this, in this image right here, you can see that the maximum is 50 for the outer square and the minimum for the inner square is 6%. What does that mean? The max square is where basically where you want the outer rings of the plate to be. And the inner square is basically right in the middle of where the license plate numbers are going to come. 
Uh, it all varies on installation. You're not going to have a 6% to 50% every installation. Another uh, another thing is the installation angle and the how high you're going to have the post. So 1.3 meters to 1.8 meters is the sweet spot for most of the installations that you're going to be using it for. There are scenarios where you will be using it higher in uh, water houses for semi trucks. Nor normally, since the semi trucks have the license plates in between the trailer itself and the semi truck, some have it on behind the trailer, but like I said, the installation varies. So normally 1.3, 1.8 meters would be the ideal spot with an angle of 15 degrees. And the recognition distance is around three meters. So you can play with that a little bit. These are the char characteristics of the product as a compression of H.265 plus. What that means is it's an encoding type that basically uses less bandwidth. It, a, it's a four megapixel 30 FPS camera, has a WDR of 120 dB, has a reset button on the back of the camera, has a micro SD slot up to 256 gigabytes, and it is PoE standard which is 802.3 AF. Some of the functions of the camera is the license plate recognition, and it also has vehicle type detection. So what color car it is, what year it's coming from. It also has watermark and privacy mask. And the database of captures is up to 10,000. And it also says here for the capture range, it's zero to 70 kilometers per hour. It has a motorized lens of 2.8 to 12 millimeters, one audio channel input output, like I said, and one alarm channel input output dry contact. This is the web interface or the NVR user interface that you can see the captures for the LPR on. This right here is the NVR side. On the software NVMS, you will see it soon. But this is how it's basically going to look on the NVR. The car is going to come, the plate's going to be recognized, it's going to capture it, and you can see the result here. This is how it's going to look on the web interface. And this is the database. So we have two plates here. And here's the search option where you can search the plates on the database. We have the time in and time out. So you put the time, the date and the time and the date and the time. And then you'll have right here on the bottom option, you'll have type of list, whether it's on the allow list or the block list, or if it's a stranger. You can also filter by license plate number if you have the license plate and you just want to filter by that license plate. You can see here, they found the license plate, they clicked on it, and it'll give you a small playback of when it was captured. This is the mobile app. And the way you are going to look for the plates on the mobile app, you're going to go to look for event. And then right here, once you find the event, you'll go to vehicle and then time in, time out, the type, and then you also have plate number here. Once you find these are the results, you click on say number one or number two, and it will give you as well a small playback of when the plate was captured. On the mobile app, there is also a remote activation of the relay. You can either open or close the barrier. You can see right here, alarm out. This is the open, and this is the close. And this is a small video on how the parking management of the LPR is going to work.
You can see the car is approaching the entrance, not the exit. Recognize the plate and the barrier opens. The same for exiting, recognize the plate and the barrier opens. Here it gives you a rough estimate of the angle, the height, and the distance that it's going to read. The barrier opens it. It's on the allow list. And the car passes through. So this is how you would set up the LPR. It will be in events and you can see ANPLR right here. Once you go to that setting, you have to enable it and save, enable these two options, save that. After that is saved, you will go to comparison and linkage. There is where if you have a barrier uh, cabled, you would have to enable this setting in comparison and linkage to be able to open the barrier. Once that's saved, you can go to the area. If you think the area is off, you can adjust the area here with the min and the max. And here is the schedule you can put. It has a set schedule. You can edit the schedule whichever way you want, when you want it to record, when you don't want it to record. And last, this is the vehicle database. So when you go to the vehicle database, you will go to add, you see the license plate number here, and then the owner, you can put the, the name here on the owner and license plate type. And that is basically the functions of the LPR camera. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the fisheye. The fisheye that we have is a six megapixel camera. What are what is basically a fisheye? Well, a fisheye can work in panoramic view of 180 degrees or 360 degrees in one single image or that can be reconstructed into multiple scenes. So why would you need this? In an office setting, if you're going to put cameras in an office, you would only need one fisheye on the ceiling to do the job of two or three cameras. And this is what I mean. This fisheye is on the ceiling and it's capturing everything that's going on in the entire office. You can change this view on the software or on the mobile application to view from different views, or if you want to change the lens, you can also do that. There's also a setting on the mobile app where it's a virtual reality, it's a virtual reality camera. You can move your phone, and as you move your phone, you can the lens will move with it. This camera also has a de-warping function or unwrapping, basically. It's going, the image is basically just going to be 180 or 360 in two, in both lenses. So you'll see right here's the panoramic. And it can basically see all around. 
and this image as well. This is the fisheye on our NVMS software. This is on the computer. You can see it has different installation modes for wherever you're going to install it, whether it's on a ceiling, a wall, or you're using it for testing on a table. Another thing that you saw there is the fisheye PTZ right there. What this setting will do is if you have this display mode or any display mode, once you activate this setting, you can move yourself, the lens of the, P of the camera, you can click and drag it to wherever you want it to look. And this is how it's going to look on the app. There is the VR setting I was talking about. These are some of the characteristics for the product. It has a compression of H.265. It's six megapixels, 30 frames, and it has a digital WDR. The camera also has a reset button and a micro SD slot of up to 256. The PoE is PoE standard, so 0.3 AF. The functions of this camera has dewarping, water mask, and privacy mask, and it also has a built-in microphone along with basic AI functionalities like motion detection, line crossing, region intrusion, and region entrance and exiting. The lens is a 1.1 millimeter lens, and you can use it for outdoor as well. Now we're going to talk about the PTZ. This particular PTZ is the four megapixel PTZ that comes with smart tracking. We, all, we also have a eight megapixel version that also does smart tracking. So what is a PTZ? Basically, a PTZ is a camera that can move, that can pan the horizontal movement, it can move tilting the vertical movement, or it can zoom. It enlarges or reduces the image. And it can be controlled from your mobile application, a joystick, or the NVMS software. This is a little video of how the PTZ is going to zoom in, how it can look at details. This is one at day. This PTZ has an optical zoom of up to 25 times. So as you can see here, it's Zooming in on the fence, you can see the detail very clearly. You can see on the ambulance, it says ambulance, and on the semi truck, you can see the number 74 very clearly. And with the man walking to the right. And during the night, you can also see images very clearly. You can see that you, you can see the 74 on the semi truck. Then right here, you can also see 815F very clearly. So, the auto tracking with AI. 
there is two types of auto tracking that this particular camera can do. One of them is human auto tracking and the other one is vehicle auto tracking. This is a video on how the human auto tracking is going to work. You basically set the area to whatever area you desire where you're going to track the, the human. And this is another part of the video where it shows you the vehicle auto tracking. So you saw the vehicle coming out of the garage and it's going to detect that vehicle. These are some of the product characteristics of the camera. It has a compression of 8.265 plus. It's four megapixels, 30 frames. But like I said earlier, we also have another version of this PTZ that's eight megapixels. This particular one is a has a WDR of 120 dBs. It has an infrared radius of up to 150 meters. It has a reset button and a micro SD slot of up to 256 gigabytes. This is PoE plus, not standard. So the PoE plus that you would need is 802.3 AT. It has smart tracking for humans and vehicles, along with watermark, privacy mask, and all of the basic, the basic AI functionalities like motion detection, the line crossing as well, intrusion detection, region entrance and exiting and it also has heat mapping so this particular ptz has 360 presets it has eight patrols four patterns and it also includes a wall support with the camera itself it has a motorized lens of up to 4.8 to 120 millimeters and it has a optical zoom of up to 25 times it has one audio channel for input and output, and it has an alarm channel, input and output, dry contact. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the metadata. This is a mini dome IP camera, that's four megapixels. Basically what the metadata does it, it, is it analyzes the attributes of any human, the vehicle, Motor, uh, motorized vehicles or non-motorized vehicles. So for example, this person right here, you can see that he's wearing a black shirt. It's going to tell you it's wearing a black shirt. It's going to tell you which way he is facing, whether he's facing to the front of the camera or the back of the camera, whether he has a mask on, whether he has a hat on, whether he has a backpack, where he, what color his pants are, whether he's wearing a skirt or a dress. And for the cars, it's going to tell you what color the car is, what year the car is from, what type of car it is, whether it's a sedan, an SUV, a school bus, a big van, a pickup, a semi, or a special vehicle. Like most of some vehicles in Florida, I know that they have the, the three wheel the three-wheeled vehicles, I don't remember where exactly those are from, but they're showing up a lot recently now. So those would be categorized under the special vehicle. For the brand, we have 128 brands. And for the models, we also have 12,000 models that the camera can basically tell. For the motorized vehicles, it can tell you whether it's a bike, an electric motorcycle, 
a non-motor a non-motor vehicle or a tricycle this is the osd on the camera of the people counting or the car and bike counting you can see for the people that it counted 359 for the cars 1338 and for the bikes 123 you can change these if you don't like the way that it sounds like human sounds a little off-putting so you can put person or people if you don't like car you can put vehicle if you don't like bike you can put uh, tricycles or motorized vehicle and you can see here on the ui the detection and the analysis so on the first one is a male he is around 18 to 48 years old he doesn't have glasses and he doesn't have a mask for the cars you can see here this car is from 2016 it's an mpv it's white and it's a chrysler this is just another analysis of the people detection seeing it's a male it's he's in his youth 18 to 40. direction is what i was talking about he has his back face to the camera so it's going to say direction back and he doesn't have headgear no glasses no backpack for, for the long and short sleeve long sleeve upper color green he doesn't have a mask and he doesn't have a shoulder bag for the car detection this is how it's going to look the color is white the year is 2016 what type of car it is it's a suv what brands it's a benz and what model of the car it's a benz gle and this is also for the non-motorized vehicles as well see on the left here this is a bike it'll it classified this as a electric motorcycle and this one as well as an electric motorcycle You can also search. You can also do the event search based on the AI of uh, the attributes of people or the attributes of the car or the attributes of the bike. So here you can put today. This search is up to 30 days, 30 days back. So you can put today to 30 days back. It will do the event search. The event here, you can put human or car or bike and then the attribute you can put what color shirt the person was wearing or what type of car it was and it'll search that specific car so here the attribute motor vehicle non-motor vehicle see so it got the bike and these are some of the characteristics of the camera this is the model down here has a compression of h.265 plus it's four megapixels 30 frames has a wdr of 120 db has an infrared distance of the 30 meters it has a reset button a micro sd slot of up to 256 gigabytes and it is poe standard which is 0.3 af the functions has intelligent human and vehicle metadata has watermark and privacy mask it also has basic basic ai functions which is the line crossing the motion detection the region entrance and exiting it also has face detection not recognition has line crossing for humans and vehicles and of course the metadata with the attributes this camera has a 2.8 millimeter lens and a integrated microphone you can also use this for exterior. So now we are going to talk about the NVR with face recognition. Right now, the only NVR that we have with face recognition is going to be the 32 channel 8 megapixel NVR. Later on down the line, we are going to have face recognition NVRs with lower channels. But right now, the 32 is the only one that can do it. The face recognition basically it allows real-time monitoring of the face 
or human and, human and vehicle recognition or LPR. Basically the 32 channel MVR does basically everything and you can either do it by web or directly from the NVMS or on the NVR. So for the face recognition, you can see right here, this is the web browser. And this is the UI of the web browser. You can see it detected the face, detected the plate, and detected the person. It can also do smart searches. It allows you to create up to 32 libraries and 10,000 faces to perform intelligent face-based searches. And these are some of these smart searches that you can do. So today, like I said, you can only search about the 30 days back. So you'll have today's date and it'll go to all the way 30 days before, unless you're gonna do it by week or by day. In that case, by day is just today, and then by week, just seven days back. Then you search it, and this is going to show all the faces that it captured within that time period. These are the characteristics of the NVR. It has a compression of H.265+, and it's eight megapixels. It has a 32 channels and it has simultaneous 16 channel playback. It has 16 PoE ports and four hard drive slots of up to 12 terabytes, not 10. So in total, you'll be having 64 terabytes of available space if you do decide to use four hard drives. It has two RJ45 ports and a video output of up to 4K. The functions that it supports is facial recognition and LPR metadata. And this this uh, this NVR supports up to six channels with face recognition using cameras that support the face detection. So these are some of the cameras that do support it. You can see the models here, and it also supports up to two channels with face recognition using cameras that don't support face detection. So in total, you'll have eight channels that support face recognition, six using cameras that support it, and two using cameras that don't support it. Now we are going to talk about the smart dual light, the white light plus IR. What this function is, is basically at night, it's going to turn infrared. So the 24 seven color isn't going to turn on until a person or an object comes into contact with the camera. The 24 seven light, the white light will turn on and then it will capture that specific image when the person or the object walks out of the range of the aperture of the camera, it will turn the white light off and go back to infrared. Why would you need this function? So a couple reasons why you would need this function. One is if you're in a general store and someone's trying to, let's say, rob the store at night, most 24 seven cameras, uh, the color cameras have the white light on all the time. So they'll basically know where the camera is going to be recording. If it's dark, and the infrared's on, the white light isn't on, they don't really know where the camera is. So it's going to be harder for them to take the camera out or pass through the building undetected. Another reason is most clients don't like the white, uh, the, the 24 seven color, the light on, but they also still want the 24 seven color recording. This helps in that sense as well. And for the final reason is to reduce the, the corrosion of the white light. So a lot of people get bothered of the white light when it's too bright. And this reduces that, uh, that it can irritate the people. So you can see the camera is on infrared. The car is passing by the, of the aperture of the camera. It turns on the white light. You can see everything in color. When the car passes away from the aperture of the camera, it goes back to infrared. Where can you use Smart Dual Light? 
in residences, you can use it in retail stores and in warehouses as well. The security cameras with our smart dew light can be used as a motion sensor, illuminating the way for your family members at night or to deter intruders as well. For the retail stores, you don't really need to worry about the store's security monitor when they are away. When the store is closed and a trespasser or person that wants to rob the store comes, the automated lighting can actually surprise them and maybe deter them away. And for warehouses, the white light only turns on when an event occurs and providing good flexibility and reliable protection for the goods and assets located inside that warehouse. These are some of the cameras that support the Smart Dual Light Supplement. These are the models right here. So the XB82T, the Gen 3, the 82T, and the 82ZT. All of these products in our E-Series line, not just the products that I've showed you today, all of the E-Series products come NDAA compliant. And all of our E-Series products come with a five-year warranty to all of the products that we have in the E-Series line. Last but not least, I would like to thank you guys for coming and joining me on the webinar. Um, we do have a application coming soon that's basically everything in one so all of the, all of the e-series products are going to be able to be viewed on that application whether it's cameras nvrs dvrs tvi solutions we're also coming out with a lot more products later on in the future like intercoms and solar panel cameras as well we're looking into those so all of those products will be viewed in that application instead of having the hassle to go through two applications and if you guys have any questions i will be answering the questions right now Let me see if you have any. So a question from Kurt, could I please send your email address again? Sure. I will put it here on the screen once again. Here on the bottom right, you can see my email for any questions or any projects that you have upcoming. You can email me for any reason. So Ron had a question. Hi, how good is human tracking in crowded areas? So for the human tracking in crowded areas, it's pretty good. You can also have the PTZ have a return function as well. So after a certain time, you can basically recall the camera to its preset spot that you have it set as. So we have a question from Willie. Is there any camera with speed radar? So for the LPR, it doesn't exactly show the speedometer of the speed the car that's traveling. It's just that it can detect it at that speed. So I'm just gonna wait here two more minutes in case you guys have any questions to answer.
Okay, I currently don't see any questions. Once again, I would like to thank you guys for coming and joining us at this webinar. And thank you for being interested in the E-Series line and all of our products that we have in the line. Thank you for your time and I hope that we can talk a little later on and maybe I can help you with some projects or help you with any questions that you have to answer. And I hope you guys have a good day.